You often hear HIV experts say the HIV antibody tests are highly specific. This means if you test positive, you're infected with HIV. No ifs and no buts. Just as this star sign points to only one make of car, a positive antibody test has only one cause, HIV infection. In 1988 and 1993, the Perth Group published scientific papers in which we presented evidence that the specificity of the HIV antibody tests has not been determined and is hence unknown. Our view has not changed, but in this presentation we are going to shed a different light on the same problem using a novel approach based on antibodies in mothers and babies. For all intents and purposes, babies don't make antibodies until the day they are born. Yet they don't succumb to all the infections they meet in the outside world because in utero they get a large transfusion of antibodies from their mothers. Antibodies, also called immune globulins or immunoglobulins, which come in several classes, are transferred to the baby via the placental circulation. So successful is this that at birth the concentration of antibodies in the baby's blood equals that in the mother. What's relevant to us is how long the mother's antibodies persist once the baby is born. Antibodies are proteins and like all proteins in the body are in a continuous state of renewal and destruction. Much like people, they are born, they age and they die in repeating cycles. In biochemical language, proteins undergo anabolism and catabolism. At birth, the baby is disconnected from the mother, and the only fate awaiting the mother's transplacental antibodies is catabolism. How long does it take before the mother's antibodies disappear? The answer was first obtained about 60 years ago, and many studies since have confirmed the same result. The half-life of maternal antibodies is 28 to 30 days. Mathematically, it takes five half-lives for near-total disappearance of antibodies which equates to 150 days or 5 months. Some studies extend the time for up to 9 months, while others claim less than 5 months. For example, using an ELISA test, the same type of test used to test for HIV antibodies, researchers found many babies lose maternal measles antibodies at 3 to 4 months. The West Australian Department of Health measles fact sheet states babies 6 to 9 months of age are susceptible to measles because they have no maternal antibodies. The Australian Government Immunisation Handbook also confirms that antibodies are metabolised within 6 months. No study has produced a figure greater than 12 months. Here's a graph published by STEAM in 1973. Here you see the transplacental passage of maternal antibodies beginning at about 12 weeks of gestation. It builds up to a maximum at birth and then begins to decline and is zero at nine months. Meantime, around the time of birth, the baby begins making his own antibodies. The declining maternal antibodies and the increasing baby's antibodies combine to cause a trough at about two to three months, the time that doctors recommend babies start their immunizations. It's strange but true but although HIV-positive mothers are in prolonged, continuous and intimate contact with their unborn babies, the HIV experts say on average only a quarter of babies become infected. Yet at birth, all babies have a positive HIV antibody test. This is because the antibody tests are reacting to the mother's HIV antibodies transferred along with all her other antibodies to the baby during pregnancy. This is why antibody tests cannot be used to diagnose HIV infection in newborns. It's only after the mother's antibodies have disappeared that it's possible to make any sense of a positive antibody test in a baby. So a doctor would have to wait about six months to make this call. Yet despite all the research and assertions by paediatric specialists and textbooks, in 1987 a panel convened by the CDC decided to make an exception for the antibodies that react in an HIV test. In 1987, without citing any evidence to contravene previous research, the CDC expert panel stated most of the consultants believe that passively transferred maternal HIV antibody could sometimes persist for up to 15 months. In 1991, again without evidence, the CDC panel extended this time to 18 months, and in 1995 the time was extended to beyond 30 months, double what it was eight years earlier. Yet scientists know that HIV antibodies are proteins, and the biochemical pathways that degrade such proteins do not signal out any for special treatment. 
Certainly catabolism may vary by a month or so, but never to the extent believed by the CDC. Once metabolism doesn't say, you're an HIV antibody protein, I'm going to quadruple your lifetime, and then some. Whatever the CDC consultants believed does not constitute scientific proof. Their belief reflects an unwillingness to consider explanations that may lie outside the HIV theory of AIDS. Ironically, it was CDC scientists who proved that maternal HIV antibodies do not get special treatment. In 1993, scientists at the CDC's own HIV serology laboratory developed an extremely ingenious test which could distinguish the mothers from the baby's antibodies that reacted in the HIV antibody test. This proved once and for all that the maternal HIV antibodies disappear by about six months and at the same rate discovered 42 years earlier for other maternal antibodies. It's a mystery why the CDC panel disregarded the CDC's own evidence. Let us now use this knowledge to consider two unique studies of babies born to HIV-positive mothers, and in particular, to look at the times the HIV antibodies disappear. In the European Collaborative Study reported in 1988, there were 271 babies. Here is the graph showing how the percentage of babies with a positive antibody test declined with age. As expected, at time zero, birth, 100% of babies had a positive antibody test. Then the number declined, becoming about 15% at about 22 to 24 months. We don't know if the percentage would continue to decline or where it would end up because testing stopped at 24 months. Here we've added the decline of maternal antibodies as per Steen's graph and we can see that the number of HIV positive babies dropped from 100% at birth to 75% at 9 months. Then after that, the number of HIV positive babies declines rapidly from 75 to 15%. This means that overall 60% of the 271 babies lost HIV antibodies beyond the age of 9 months. Here we've shaded this in to emphasise the point. In the second study, the aerial study, there are no graphical data, but the data are similar. From 12 months, double the time maternal antibodies used to disappear before the CDC believed otherwise, almost half the babies, 42%, lost their antibodies. So what, you ask? What does this have to do with specificity? Let's take another look at the graph starting at the 9-month mark. From just beyond this point, the graph declines quite steeply as more and more babies lose HIV antibodies. But whose antibodies are being lost? They can't be the mother's because hers have already disappeared. She is no longer part of the equation. So unless antibodies appear out of nowhere, the antibodies being lost must have been made by the babies. But we're told HIV is for life. No one is supposed to lose HIV antibodies, except possibly when critically or terminally ill. How can babies make HIV antibodies vanish? There are only two explanations. Either a large proportion of babies are infected by their mothers, but then eliminate HIV, without any form of treatment, including antiretroviral drugs. Or, for whatever reason the babies produce these antibodies that reacted in the HIV antibody test, it cannot be HIV infection. And if this is the case, especially because it applies to so many babies, the specificity of the antibody tests cannot be anything like the 99.9% .9 the HIV experts tell us. In fact, it may even be zero. You may object, couldn't these be slowly disappearing maternal antibodies the baby acquired after birth from breastfeeding? That's a good point, because there are antibodies in breast milk, but the answer is no. In the European Collaborative Study, only 1 in 20 newborn babies were breastfed, and then only for a few weeks. In the aerial study, no baby was breastfed. You may also object on the basis that some HIV-positive mothers have a much higher concentration of antibodies which gives their babies an extra large dose. This is a possibility, but again one not borne out by the facts. The transfer of antibodies from mother to baby is subject to negative feedback and saturates at the normal level of maternal antibodies. It's like a bucket brigade at a fire. There's only so much that can be transferred. And increasing the source, the amount of antibodies, does not change the rate at which they can be transferred. You may also think the HIV antibody tests are super sensitive that's why the antibodies can be picked up so long. It 
doesn't matter how super sensitive they are, even if they can detect one molecule, they cannot detect a molecule that is not there. Don't forget the lifespan of maternal antibodies was determined using techniques which included radioactive proteins, and techniques involving radioactive isotopes are exquisitely sensitive. To emphasise that the issue is the time at which maternal antibodies disappear, we will show a graph published by Professor Rolf Zinkenagel in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2001. Professor Zinkenagel is a highly credentialed Nobel laureate, and his graph shows maternal antibodies reaching zero at 10 months, and, even if a baby is briefly breastfed, as shown on the early weaning graph, no greater than 12 months. So unless you favour the self-cure account, the only viable explanation is that factors other than HIV cause large numbers of false positive HIV antibody tests in the babies of HIV positive mothers. If these factors cause false positive antibody tests in 40 to 60% of infants, why not all of them? And why not in their HIV positive mothers and fathers? Why not in anyone who is HIV antibody positive? It's little wonder the CDC kept increasing the time it takes for HIV antibodies to disappear. The consequences of not doing so would negate the specificity of the HIV antibody tests and with it the HIV theory of AIDS. If only for the sake of the children, it is incumbent upon the HIV experts to present evidence confirming their belief that maternal antibodies do persist beyond the 6 to 12 months documented by all other scientists, including scientists at the CDC.